I have final table ends at 10.30, you know? I don't think I'll make dinner. Excellent. I don't think There's I'll no make dinner. dinner. I'm thinking. I know what, what are you thinking about over there? there? Don't think about what Landon's telling you to do right now. <laughs> I should push over. Alex got some coaching from Landon Tice. I think Landon would say all of it here. Yeah, there's 80,000 out there. Botez has 20 big That's blinds with her 200K stack. Touch your mouth. 10. 10, I mean, <laughs> sorry. Wow. Hey, be nice. Um, in this episode of Weekly Poker Hand, we have a hand from the Enclave Celebrity Invitational. This tournament was full of lots of non-professional poker players who get in there, splash around. These events were known for their loosey-goosey action. Everybody's having a sandwich. Let's get right to it. England. England? Sorry, I don't know any celebrities. He opts to Lent from Under the Gun Plus One with King Nine of Spades off of his 12 big blind stack. I think I'd probably min-raise. Shoving's probably fine, but whatever. He limps over around to Conseco on the button who limps King Eight of Diamonds out of her 20 big blind stack. Mm, maybe a little loose, but probably okay. Webb in the small blind with a 11 big blind stack. He opts to limp a state offsuit. I think this is a spot where most people should just rip it all in. It's an annoying scenario because you are going to be trapped by the limper some portion of the time. But quite often, limpers limp hands they think are not quite good enough to raise. So what's that going to be? That's going to be middle connected high cards and suited connectors and small and medium pairs. And it turns out Ace-8 actually does pretty well against that range, even when you get called. So you're only in terrible shape against hands like maybe Ace-10 or Ace-9 or Pocket 9s. And to be fair, Ace-10 or Ace-9 may even fold to an all-in, given these players are you know, not used to facing all ends, most likely. Whatever, ace eight limps. And then Alexandra Botez, good, strong, world-class chess player. She's getting into poker. She's streaming a lot. Make sure you check out her stream. She has ace queen offsuit in the big blind with 10 big blinds. This is a mandatory all in my mind because when you shove and pick up the pot, you have to realize you are getting 80,000 chips. I don't think there's an ante in play in this tournament, but if there was, it'd be even more of a reason to shove. If you can take your 200 and turn it into 280 or 300 just by shoving all in preflop, and when you get called, you're usually going to be in great shape because ace-queen's pretty good. This is an excellent spot to shove. At the end of the day, poker is a lot about equity realization and denying your opponents their equity. And by checking in this scenario, as she does, she lets all of her opponents realize their equity. They get to see the flop and go from there, which is great for them. Whereas if you shove, you take all their equity and keep it for yourself. So this is a great spot to rip it all in. Actually discuss this topic in depth in my newest book, 100 Essential Tips to Master No Limit Hold'em. Check it out. We'll put links in the description below. If you've already pre-ordered it or bought it, thank you very much. I appreciate you. And if you haven't yet, if you like my channel, you'll like the book. All right. Alex decides to check. Let's go to the flop. I was just giving away my children last night. Oh. That seven hit. was cute. King, queen, ten. It's kings for both England and Canseco. Aggressive. Queens for Botez. Doesn't say much, does it? No, 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 actually not one thing. No. Not one thing, elusive. 35? 35? Like playing with you. I don't, every time we play together, it's like, yeah. No, because I, I like the way he plays. I'm gonna call. Wait, 25, 35. Right? 25. I don't want any part of this. I'm going to leave the two of them to it. <laughs> Three of them. Does to you. It. It's fucked. <laughs> I'm scared. Really tough spot for Alex. Just that queen, but a gut shot. Calls here. Flop comes. King of clubs, queen of diamonds, ten of clubs. Everybody has a little something, except for Webb. He just has a bad gut shot. Webb checks. Botez checks. England bets 35,000. A small bet, which I actually think is fine and reasonable in this scenario. Now, I will say in multi-way pots, you have to normally be quite careful, but on this particular board, 
because everyone limped, they're gonna have a lot of middle and low cards. And for that reason, I think top pairs are gonna do way better in the situation compared to if it was a pre-flopped raise pot where then you have to worry about running into far more straights and two pair. So I like a small bet. This actually will deny a lot of his opponent's equity. For example, the ace-eight's just gonna fold, right? But ace-eight does have some equity against the king-nine. So I like the bet. Over round to Conseco, she's in a pretty rough spot with top pair bad kicker. Look, she's getting pretty good pot odds, but she is going to get shoved on every once in a while by the small blind and the big blind, which is certainly annoying. She's going to have to fold to that. I think if she did not have the backdoor flush draw, this would be a pretty reasonable spot to fold top pair. Because if you consider the hands that England is likely to limp from early position and then bet the flop, it's going to be a lot of middle connected high cards, right? Like king queen, king jack, maybe queen jack, maybe queen 10. And yeah, she beats some of those hands, but the hands that she does beat have a pretty good amount of equity, like queen jack. So this is a spot where you want to do everything you can to try to get a read on the players to your left, because if you can kind of tell they're going to be shoving, as you often can in Celebrity Invitationals, definitely fold. If they're obviously folding, though, then it's probably fine to stick around, because then it's as if you're closing the action. Anyway, she opts the call, which I think is fine and good. Ace-8 also folds. Botez getting good odds closing the action, I think, has to continue. And we head on to the turn. 185, can't pause. You see in the bottom right corner of your screen. Ooh. And the turn is a jack. England has a straight. Yeah, but Botez has the better straight. The turn is a very interesting card, the jack of clubs, because now a lot of hands that were very good on the flop just got a whole lot worse on the turn. So Botez checks. And then England bets 75000 for a medium-sized bet. And this is a spot where he made a mistake that a lot of people who have not studied a poker lot make. He has a straight, and straights are normally very high up on the hand-ranking chart. However, on this board, it's important to realize that Conseco and Botes can both easily have an ace, which King-9 is drawing dead against. Now, you may say, wouldn't they shove a lot of aces preflop, given they only had 10 big blinds or something like that? Apparently not, because two people limped in with an ace, right? So they could both easily have an ace, and also, they could both easily have a flush, because if you consider the hands that Conseco is going to limp behind on the button, a lot of those are going to be low suited connected hands, and the ones that are going to call flop bet are going to be flush draws. Botez could also easily have a flush draw that just got there. So even though a straight is normally very good, it's actually kind of bad when it's the straight down to the nine on this board. So this is a spot where if England checks it down, he probably wins. But if he bets and gets called or bets and gets raised, it's an absolute disaster for him. So he does not realize that. He goes for the bet. Let's see how the rest of the play proceeds. Okay. Right? Three clubs yeah, sure. on the board. Thanks. Gee, thanks. Quite the support system I have over here. I'm sorry, I was trying to look at a sports game, but I can't. No why. Croc take a little peek. Trying. Yeah, he wants to see what that hand is. <laughs> Let's check calls. England just drawing to another chop. Conseco gets the drift and folds very easily, as she certainly should, so good job there. Not thinking top pair is good, because top pair is obviously really bad here. And then Botez has the straights. She's in an interesting spot because the pot's already quite large, and she's facing a 75,000 bet with only 165,000 in her stack. And normally in spots like this where your hand is probably good, but very vulnerable to being outdrawn, and you're kind of shallow stacked in relation to the bet in the pot, usually going all in is the right play. This is a weird scenario, though, because I'm kind of having a tough time finding logical bluffs for... England, because if he did have the ace of clubs and any other card, he's obviously going to call off and you're getting free rolled, right? Because he's going to make a flush sometimes. If he has a hand like queen of clubs something, again, I don't know how loose England is playing preflop, but say he has queen of clubs eight, then obviously you'd much rather shove, right? Because you would really love for that hand to fold, getting really good odds or put in the rest of the money behind, because that's the hand that may not feel inclined to bluff the river. Maybe he has a hand like King, queen with the queen of clubs. That would make some sense, right? Not necessarily a good bet on the turn, but it's a hand that he could logically have. Maybe he has a hand like pocket threes with the three clubs and just deciding to bluff it that may give up on the river, right? So if he has a lot of hands like that in his range, then you definitely want to shove. But if his range is much tighter to the point that he literally has an ace only or just some sporadic bluffs, then maybe she can call. That said, I think the default play in this scenario is just to go all in and try to cut off whatever odds your opponent has. That says, she opts the call, which you know, way better than folding. <laughs> and let's head to the river. 
Harper brings another jack. Oh, ankle. Wow. Reaching. This All of it. Oh my goodness. Is this going to possibly work? Ah! Looks like it's a not, full house now. Not, not the most like comfortable it. spot for okay, Alex Botez. Alex's sisters. No, so but I love you, Cherry. I don't know how to play on this table. Oh, do you have an ace? I do have an Follow ace. Follow your gut, you sister. <laughs> Kronk, yeah, Kronk encouraging. I mean, I don't have that much behind, so um, I have to. If he hasn't flushed, this feels bad, man. Call. Makes a call and is a winner. Now it's Botez. He has a lower straight. Up to wow. 515,000 in wow. chips. Yeah, but like, so I, 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 yeah. The river is the Jack of Spades, which is a really nasty river for Botez. The problem is, is that she has almost no chips. At this point, the pot is 335,000, and she only has 90,000 remaining in her stack. She checks. England decides to go all in. The question is, is should he actually go all in here with the bad end of the straight? And um, I think the answer is probably a reluctant yes. This is a weird spot because think of the bluffs that England could reasonably have. And in this spot, I think he just wants to block full houses that are auto calls, right? Perhaps he also wants to block flushes. He'd much rather have a random club in his hand like the nine of clubs and the nine of spades because then he does block some auto calls with nine eight of clubs or whatever. But it's also a spot where... <laughs> People are going to realize I'm getting amazing pot odds. How can I fold? I'm probably chopping some portion of the time, losing sometimes, but pot odds exist. And if you can look and tell Botez is literally not folding, then save your money. But if you can tell she's absolutely sick about it, maybe she'll find a fold and keep her four and a half big blinds remaining in her stack, then you might as well bluff it because you're certainly not winning on this river. That said, here it's an end. Botez makes the crying call. I think that's probably going to be the right play in this scenario. And... She doesn't just get a chop, she gets rewarded with the entire pot. So good job for her. What I wanna know, before we wrap it up here, is if you could pick a table of celebrities to play with, alive or dead, who would they be? Feel free to fill up the whole table, write it down in the comment section below. I'm interested to hear who you all want to play with. Good luck in your games, have fun, make the most of your opportunities. And if you wanna see another hand where Alexandra Botez gets in there and battles, this time against the best chess player in the world, Magnus Carlsen, not at chess, but at poker. We have that lined up right now for you.